one of the things that I'm really grateful for on this channel is the interaction with you guys. Sometimes I get tons of messages with really interesting conversations that we have uh, with people that I get to know from all over the world uh, and asking really great questions. And I always try to answer maybe not all of them, but at least as many as I can, as best as I can, of course. Um, and for example, one question that gets asked all the time is how do I make my videos from start to finish? So here we are today, let's find out. Hey guys, what's up? So, okay, let's talk a little bit about the process from start to finish of how I make my videos. In general, I would say you can divide it into seven different parts, um, which would be choosing a song at first, of course, uh, learning the song, the pre-production, uh, video and audio setup, video and audio recording, mixing and mastering, and finally video editing. So uh, let's take a look at all these chapters, so to say. And uh, yeah, let's start, of course, with uh, choosing a song. I think for all my videos, like I'd say, uh, I have always some sort of connection to the song that I choose. It's always a song that means a lot to me or that I'm listening uh, quite frequently to. You know, some, some deeper connections that I have with the song. I never just take a song and say, okay, that sounds cool, let's do that. I think it's like for every musician, whenever you learn an instrument, for example, what's the first thing you want to do? You want to play the songs that you like, like your favorite songs. You want to play those songs. So same thing for me, <laughs> whenever I really, really like a song, I want to play that stuff. So in this particular case, I chose Dissection's Thorns of Crimson Death. I think it's not a secret that I'm a huge Dissection fan. Um, I think uh, there's no other band out there that I did more videos of uh, than Dissection. Um, so yeah, of course, uh, they were one of the first bands, like black metal bands, uh, that I got introduced to and uh, yeah, I never stopped listening to them. Their songs never get old and especially this one. It's such a timeless masterpiece. So yeah, I think it was just time that I attacked this one as well. Okay, so I'm attacking this uh, project today. Uh, today is May the 6th only so that you get the reference of how long it takes me from start to finish of a video. Uh, May the 6th is today. I'm aiming for uh, the 1st of July to be done with this one. So yeah, hopefully everything goes well. I mean, you guys already know if <laughs> that song came out on July 1st or not. So okay, choosing the song uh, today was the easiest thing, uh, I think, in this whole process. Um, so next up would be learning the song. What I usually do is I look around and see what kind of different versions do I find of the song. Um, yeah, you probably know uh, some bands re-record uh, their songs or their albums sometimes, uh, do a remaster or uh, even some live versions can be uh, very different from the original album version, for example. So um, yeah, I look around, uh, see what kind of different versions are available on YouTube, Spotify and whatnot. And uh, then I choose the ones that I personally like the most, or at least there are like some parts uh, that I like the most. And then I get a direction of where I want to go uh, with my version that I'm going to do. Okay, so a few days have gone by now and I listen to a lot of different live versions and the studio version, of course. And I uh, finally narrowed it down to two uh, versions that I like the most and that I'm gonna use like uh, some sort of template uh, for creating my own template and uh, final cover version of this song. So the versions I settled for are um, the studio version of course and uh, the live in Stockholm uh, version. Um, I prefer in a lot of parts the live version here in Stockholm more to the uh, studio version. Um, sometimes for the slower tempos and more feeling in my opinion that they uh, put in here um, so yeah i think that sounds better for the song and therefore i'm gonna go with the mix between uh, both versions 
So the next thing that I'm going to do now is to listen to both of these versions endlessly, basically, for more or less one week uh, before even going to uh, grab my guitars or uh, sit on the drums and learning the parts. I think that's what helps me the most to get really familiar with the strong uh, structure and uh, all the little details. So yeah, in the next uh, week, uh, this is the only song I'm going to listen to. Uh, really gonna get obsessed with uh, the one song that I'm working on at the moment and uh, therefore yeah whenever I'm in the car or uh, working out doing whatever and I have the opportunity to listen to music uh, while doing that um, yeah I'm gonna listen to this pay attention to all the little details and that's uh, hopefully gonna help me to create my own template uh, afterwards when learning all the parts actually. So after endlessly listening to these two versions of the song it comes now to actually learn the song on all the instruments. Uh, what I usually do is I start with the guitars uh, first and uh, then moving on uh, to drums and everything like that. So um, yeah, maybe you have noticed if you checked out the Live in Stockholm and the studio version that uh, the studio version is an E actually and the live uh, version they play is in D. So I thought I'd do like a middle thing and I uh, want to play it in E flat. And uh, yeah, the tuning uh, is also very essential for me to choose which guitar I'm gonna pick for, for this song. If you already uh, saw the video, because this one I will upload later, uh, you know that I went for uh, these two. Uh, these are some amazing Harley Benton guitars. And uh, yeah, let me tell you um, how this actually came, came to be. Yeah, so first of all, I want to say thank you to Harley Benton for these two amazing guitars because actually this is the very first sponsored by Harley Benton video that I make. Um, and it was not like they approached me and said, uh, hey, we want to do something or stuff like that. Uh, it was actually completely the other way around um, because, yeah, you might have seen already some Harley Benton gear that I use, like, for example, my uh, 2x12 uh, guitar cabinet, uh, which sounds incredible. It sounds absolutely amazing. And ever since I got that, like a couple of years ago already, uh, that's my go-to uh, guitar cabinet to record uh, all my songs with. Um, then I also use, for example, my um, Harley Benton, the pedal board, uh, which I use live all the time. And that was actually the reason why I bought it, because it's still small enough so I can uh, carry it from one gig to the next one. And it's also compact enough that I can put all the effects uh, that I need on there. I don't really need uh, lots of effects uh, when I play live or even when I'm recording, uh, but it also can carry my uh, mini guitar amp, uh, which I use live even. Uh, so yeah, th that's uh, really incredible and I'm uh, using it constantly. And uh, for bass, for example, I got the Harley Benton American Sound uh, True Tone pedal. And uh, I used that the first time for the Mayhem song that I did in uh, January uh, this year. Um, and yeah, it totally changed the bass sound uh, into a bass sound that I was looking for for a long, long time. So I'm really blown away by this pedal. Um, and it's even just, I think, 30 bucks or something. So really affordable, really, really awesome sounding pedal. And uh, yeah, I never want to record anything <laughs> on bass without that pedal anymore. And speaking of bass, uh, you might have seen in the last couple of videos my uh, Harley Benton TB70. Uh, that's an amazing bass and uh, actually the reason why I wanted to check out uh, some of their guitars. Because uh, yeah, just putting it or taking it out of the box, uh, it played incredible. I didn't need to set it up at all. Uh, it sounds fantastic and it's uh, yeah like all the Harley Benton products it's uh, really affordable but uh, really high quality yeah and it can definitely hold up to some very premium instruments from other brands anyway so this was my reason uh, that I wanted to um, check out these guitars I saw these uh, single cut models um, and then I just asked uh, Harley Benton if they want to do something together so this is the Harley Benton SC 1000 in white uh, I thought maybe something different from all the black and very dark guitars um, it has active pickups and uh, uh, yeah, it looks really, really amazing. I was at first a little 
um, yeah, concerned about the super thick body, but it actually doesn't weigh much. It's actually uh, yeah, almost light. Uh, lightweight uh, it's completely made of mahogany uh, it sounds amazing yeah i mean you already probably saw the the video uh, and get to hear uh, the guitars um, so yeah i'm really happy with this one and uh, yeah the other guitar is of a very similar shape it's also a single cut uh, but of course in black because you cannot uh, go without a black guitar in a black metal song i think um, with super nice gold hardware the hardware the floyd rose is an actual original floyd rose like not a licensed floyd rose or anything like that two original emg pickups uh, which sound boah, like uh yeah cannot describe it you heard it and uh, yeah it's a fantastic uh, this is actually much thinner than the white model and this is the harley benton sc custom plus emg floyd rose or fr i think the model is uh, called and uh, yeah i'm super blown away by uh, the quality how it plays like the neck is super fast uh, even though it's not like super thin which i like a lot and uh, yeah i don't want to bore you with uh, too many uh, geeky uh, details and specs of the guitars maybe if you guys are interested in something like that let me know in the comments maybe if you want me to make like a new gear part 3 video with a new demo or uh, something like that uh, let me know in the comments and uh, yeah maybe i can do that because i really think that these guitars are really worth uh, to have a look at so yeah amazing uh, i'm really really grateful uh, for holly benton to sponsor this video and i'm really sure uh, that i'm gonna be putting these guitars to a good use in uh, a lot of in future videos one of the benefits that you get from excessively listening to the song before actually trying to learn it on guitar is that you get so familiar with all the individual riffs with the melodies and everything like that that it's basically just uh, putting all that stuff down on the fretboard um, and for example with this riff uh, i had to try to see where on the fretboard it's actually the easiest to play <laughs> I also like to keep a strict order of the instruments. So first I learned the entire song on guitar one, uh, which was the black one, and then comes guitar two. So I tried to really focus on one instrument first, get that down, and then move on to the next one. A complex song like this one I do like to uh, sit down on my e-drum for example and get down all the beats uh, all the weird fills that are there 
and yeah of course also take notes in between uh, for like tempo changes and stuff like that Okay, so now that I'm more or less comfortable on all instruments, uh, I now start with the pre-production because of course, uh, when I start recording uh, the actual video, I usually always uh, record drums first. So I need some sort of uh, click track uh, so that I know what I'm doing and I'm not playing too fast or too slow or uh, yeah, missing out on some parts or something like that. Yeah, so I have all my notes here uh, prepared. Um, and then let's start making a click track. So the first thing I jump right into Reaper. I have uh, a template prepared, of course, uh, for all the all the new projects, uh, so that I don't have to do everything over and over again. I like to separate all the instruments uh, with different colors. So, for example, the real drums later on uh, are here in orange. Uh, red is for vocals. Blue is bass. Uh, first guitar, second guitar and everything up here is for uh, actually the pre-production. The click track uh, up here, that's the most important and pretty much in all songs uh, the only thing that I use besides the pre-recorded guitars. Underneath uh, we have Easy Drummer. Um, yeah, sometimes depending on the song, how complex it is, how difficult the parts are and stuff like that. Uh, I like to program drums beforehand uh, just for orientation when tracking the pre-production guitars. I program it by hand or uh, sometimes I also use my uh, e-drum. In this song actually uh, we won't be needing it uh, because uh, yeah, I'm very familiar with the drums so uh, I don't want to waste any any time on that. Okay, so here we are. Um, actually, you can now see right here on top all the tempo changes. Um, and uh, this is actually already the click track. This is this is actually uh, everything that's going on uh, so far. And now it comes to uh, recording uh, the guitars. When I record the guitars for the click track, that's also my last check before going to the studio and recording it for the video. Uh, to see if I learned the song correctly and I'm able to play it from start to finish without making any mistakes. Uh, so yeah, I don't mind any minor mistakes here. I just leave them in because as I said, that's only the click track for tracking the drums. So none of this ends up in the actual video later on. But yeah, if I see that I have some major gaps or anything like that, then I can go back to learning these parts uh, Yeah, better now than later in the studio. <laughs> Okay, so here we are in the main studio and now it comes to recording everything. Uh, so the first thing I always do is uh, I have to take care of the microphones that they are in place. Luckily I never <laughs> really move uh, my mics um, unless I'm for example changing the heads uh, of my drums or something like that. So we have nothing to do with the microphones. Next step would be to um, put the cameras in place. Okay, so I think the main camera angle is okay, so let me now take all the other cameras and set them up. Okay, so... So let's see. Probably a little higher. Somewhere around here. Okay. Okay, so next up is my DJI Osmo Action. Okay, so maybe a little lower, something like this. Let's see. So just checking, so that whenever I'm playing here, that everything is visible. But I think my head is a little cut off. Yeah, something like that. So yeah, I think this one should be okay as well because uh, those mounts, I don't even move them. So yeah, whenever I'm here playing, okay, that should be all in, in frame. 
Okay, this should be good as it is. I don't know, I'm gonna check that in a bit. Uh, but yeah, I think everything should be in frame here. And then one foot cam, the second foot cam, yeah. Okay, so now that we have all the cameras in place, it comes to lighting. Uh, so uh, now I'm gonna move uh, these light boxes uh, into their positions. So yeah, I think the lights are set up uh, quite okay like this. I'm gonna do a couple of uh, test recordings uh, just with the cameras and then uh, I'm gonna see uh, if I have to change something and then I think we're ready to, to do the actual recording. Okay, so it's actually the next day and I still didn't record anything. Uh, it took me a little longer uh, than expected yesterday uh, because I was experimenting a little bit. I mean, uh, maybe you can see uh, like it's a different lens on this camera and I put on some filters on uh, different cameras. Uh, I mean, it's subtle changes, but I like to experiment uh, with stuff like that and sometimes that takes me uh, more hours than I expect and then uh, everything gets delayed a little bit. But yeah, I think now uh, after making some test runs, everything is uh, set up uh, as I like it and um, I think I can start recording now actually. It's uh, insanely hot outside, it's uh, I think 32 degrees and uh, probably in here it's like uh, 132 <laughs> degrees or something like that. So yeah, I hope uh, I can record everything in the first take. And that's actually what I always try to do. Like of course, nail it in the first take uh, because uh, then it saves a lot of time. But I actually record everything in one take. So it's not like I um, record the first part and then take a break, record the second one and uh, cut everything together. Um, yeah, maybe I'm just too lazy because the editing of that kind of recording is uh, much more time consuming uh, than just play it right uh, the first time at once. <laughs> Okay, so that's it. Uh, drums are recorded. Uh, everything went okay, I think. Um, what I do is I actually don't touch the cameras as they are. I just uh, check the, all the recordings uh, later at home. Um, so in case something went wrong, uh, then I can go back in here and everything is already set up and I can re-record. Happened to me like two times maybe in total, but uh, yeah, that's still frustrating. But yeah, sometimes maybe you've seen in my videos that I do some uh, like POV shots uh, when I'm uh, playing drums. Uh, but that's of course uh, not when all the other cameras are running because it looks uh, kind of stupid. Uh, so I'm gonna put this uh, silly thing on my head now and play the entire song again. Um, only to have some extra footage to uh, blend in there. Because sometimes I think it looks kind of cool uh, to see some fills or whatever playing uh, on the drums from actually the drummer's perspective. <laughs> Okay, so here we are, a new day, and uh, yeah, I think the drums are okay, so uh, we're moving on with uh, tracking the guitars today. Uh, I'm gonna start with guitar one, of course, uh, which is always the guitar where I'm also doing the vocals. Um, so yeah, now we can tear apart <laughs> everything that we've set up here on the drums and uh, do basically the same procedure again, like first uh, setting up the the microphones that are already set up, just like with the drums. Um, then going over the different camera angles, uh, checking that out, and then uh, the last step would be uh, the lighting and then start recording. So, okay, let's go. Yeah, even though the new studio is so much bigger, I still need to take apart the drums a little bit to place a camera back here. And yeah, you see behind the amps, it's almost pitch black. So I place some lights there to create a little more depth and the main lights go to the side of the drums. 
Okay, so everything is set up now and uh, yeah, I think we're ready to go. What I'm gonna do is, uh, so this is my uh, guitar uh, setup. So today I'm gonna be recording guitar number one, which is uh, the black one. I'm gonna record uh, the guitar with the Joyo Zombie um, and then off camera I'm gonna re-record it. So doubling the guitar uh, with the PV6505 uh, Plus. And then tomorrow I'm gonna record the second guitar uh, on video with the Joyo Firebrand. And then off uh, video I'm gonna do the double track uh, with the Joyo uh, Vivo. And uh, then the next day I'm gonna record bass. And yeah, hopefully then that's gonna be all. Yeah, I'm gonna do a test recording just as uh, with the drums uh, to see if the videos are or the cameras are really set up well. And then uh, let's do the actual video. Okay, so I think uh, that worked out pretty good. Uh, first take, I don't think there were any mistakes. Uh, gonna double check later on, but first I'm gonna put on a camera on the headstock of the guitar and uh, yeah, because I already did a POV kind of shot uh, on the drums, then I always feel it fits if there's a similar moving camera on the, on the guitars as well, for example. So yeah, why not? Uh, if I don't use it later on, then it didn't hurt me to do another take. I mean, it's now, I think, nine in the evening. So I'm gonna do that one take uh, for the entire song and then head home and do the second guitar tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, so everything is recorded. I double checked uh, all the files uh, to see if I have to re-record anything, uh, which is not the case. Um, so yeah, now it comes to mixing and mastering the audio. Um, usually I send all the files uh, through the internet uh, to Toby um, from uh, Roadkill Music Production. Um, but I thought this time let's bring him everything personally and then he can tell you what he's actually doing with the mixing and mastering. So yeah, he lives like uh, one and a half hours away. Uh, so let's hit the road and see how we can make this song sound good. All right, here you can see Toby and I are just listening to the first version of the song like a really rough and quick first mix and I'm taking notes of all the parts that I want to have changed or that I have some ideas uh, what we can experiment uh, with there and yeah afterwards uh, we just discuss everything all the notes that I made and here for example we're talking about the bass solo part if you want to say so and try what fits and what not. Mega, geil, gefällt. 
gefällt mir sehr gut. Okay, so, uh, I think that was it. Uh, sounds really good. The mix is uh, done. So uh, now I'm gonna head back home and uh, I can finally start editing the video. So for me, the actual really, really intense work starts now. So, okay, let's not waste any time and go back. Okay, so now we're almost back home. And uh, yeah, funnily enough, uh, that was now like three hours drive for one hour of mixing actually the song. Um, but you know, that's what I really like about um, working with Toby and Roadkill Music Production is it's always so fast and so quickly and uh, he's so precise like everything uh, everything I tell him like maybe you can change this you know he he always gets it right on the on the first time basically uh, he has a really good ear for uh, the music like this type of music especially and yeah so ever since uh, we started working together I think uh, the sound quality really uh, improved uh, by a lot so yeah thanks Toby I really can only strongly recommend Toby and Roadkill Music Production to any one of you if you're looking for someone to do uh, your mixing mastering or even recording yeah I think Roadkill uh, should be something to consider okay so I think although we're home relatively early uh, yeah it's still sunny outside but I think I'll call it a day and I'll see you tomorrow when we start editing the video. Okay, so let's start with editing the video, the final stage of this whole <laughs> project. Uh, so let's jump into DaVinci Resolve, which is the program I use for editing all my videos. Um, and let's create a new project. All right, so here we have all the individual clips and now we can start. So let's start with the uh, base shot here all right so now we have uh, all the files in here uh, you can see so there are 23 uh, video tracks actually and underneath here uh, we have all the audio files from every camera as you can see nothing's aligned here so uh, that would be the first step that i'm gonna do to uh, align all the clips but first of all what i'm gonna do you already saw that in uh, reaper i like to organize everything by colors uh, so then it gets uh, much much easier um, to see uh, right away which uh, track I'm editing right now. Okay so uh, how do I uh, align all the clips now? My trick is uh, yeah of course at the beginning of every uh, recording for example with drums I click the sticks together or uh, when recording bass and guitar and stuff like that uh, at the same time uh, where I did that click with the sticks, I clap my hands uh, so that I have a yeah, peak in the in the audio file so I can see, okay, this is second number one, for example. So uh, yeah, as here in the drums. Okay, thoughts of Crimson Death, take fear. Yeah, so it was my fourth take. Uh, that was actually the good one. So that's it. Very simple. Uh, same thing, for example, with uh, the second guitar I got here. Just a simple clap. And uh, yeah, then I need to find uh, where these are. For example, if we look here uh, very closely, I think this one could be a clap right here. So let's see. Yeah. So this is a clap and then you can see this is probably one, this is one. So it's only a matter of uh, taking all these claps um, and align them on the same position. So let me do that. All right, so now we have everything aligned. Uh, you can see here, so this is the clap. So the next thing that we're gonna do now is because of course we're not gonna use the audio from the cameras. Um, we're gonna take the mixed version. If we zoom in here, you can see here's that little click as well. So it actually starts also with the click, which I can cut off later on. And then I can just take all the other clips here, cut them away. And now everything looks much, much cleaner. The next part would be then to start with the color grading. Okay, I think that's it. 
going from this, like just applying some minor color corrections. It looks kind of natural, no fancy colors or anything like that. Uh, the look comes actually uh, in my workflow is the very last step. Yeah, it takes a lot of time actually because it's so many different uh, video tracks. So that's it for now and I think I'm gonna continue tomorrow because uh, this actually took me now four hours. <laughs> okay, so now comes the rough cut. So I'm just uh, playing the song whenever I feel okay here could fit in a change of camera angles or something like that. I just make a cut. So later on I'm left with all those little pieces and then from there on I can like adjust the puzzle if you want to say so. Now we have cut uh, everything together here. What I now do is uh, I select the scenes that I want to have visible. So in the beginning, for example, there's uh, only playing the both clean guitars. Uh, so it doesn't make sense to have the, the drums visible or the bass, for example. So first thing I can do is for the entire clean part, just uh, delete the drums and the bass. So everything orange and blue goes away. And then I think, for example, I want to have this view is okay. And maybe the, so maybe these two just together. I like the front view from the, from the white guitar, but maybe not this one, this one either. So uh, that's a camera angle that's always kind of difficult for the main guitar, the first guitar with the vocals, because from this angle, of course, uh, Almost all the time when I'm standing in the front, uh, the microphone is in front of my face or in front of the guitar. But sometimes when I step back, for example, this, uh, this comes in quite handy. So yeah, I'm not gonna use this one. I think this one could work. So this one goes away as well. So yeah, of course I wanna have both guitars visible. I think this one will go to the left, cropping this from the right like this, maybe zoom in a little bit all the way there and the other one can go here let's see how it looks like okay here i see i cropped in a little much gonna zoom out again from until here because i don't want to have the headstock of the guitar cut off or something like that let's see yeah okay so i like that then there comes the next change Let's see what we can do here. So then uh, here comes the longer part uh, because here I want to have like everything visible. Um, for the drums I always pay attention um, what kind of stuff am I playing. Like for example in this part uh, I play more toms and everything more oriented to the right side of the drums. So uh, here we have a camera angle looking from the left, from the hi-hat side. Uh, so I don't want to use this one because uh, as you can see, you know, I'm blocking everything that's going on. So, okay, this I'm not going to take. Uh, maybe this one you could use. But I think there's a better camera angle from this one because then you can actually see the toms. Yeah, I think that one looks way better. So, okay, then um, since we have in the previous shot uh, the front view from the guitar in this one, I won't be using this one. I think I'm gonna be using this one, so the other ones. If I'm using uh, the right angle from this one, then I prefer using the left angle from the other guitar, so that would be this one. Let's delete the other ones. And then for the bass, I would choose like a front kind of view. Yeah, it looks kind of cool. I think that one looks better. Now we have all these clips together here. I'm just gonna select all, shrink them to half the size, then I want to have the guitars on the upper half, drums and bass on the lower half. And then since the first guitar is on the left speaker and the second guitar is on the right speaker, I also like to uh, split them that way on the screen. So okay, then we have this shot here. <laughs> Okay, we can leave it like that and come back to like adjusting details, for example, cropping in a little bit because uh, this one is 
too small i think here we could go and cut off the legs here and zoom in a little bit here and here the same thing but that's uh, like detailed stuff uh, what i'm gonna do uh, later on so let's move on to the next scene and that's basically uh, what i'm gonna do now with every single cut that i have here and yeah let's do that yeah so as you can tell uh, this is the most time consuming of the entire uh, editing stuff or even recording stuff i think um so yeah like after a couple of hours now uh i got like maybe a third of the entire video so yeah i'm gonna call it a day now and continue um tomorrow because uh, yes at some point your brain just melts down and uh yeah, it's uh, important to take some breaks. I think uh, today is the last day of editing. So I just uh, rewatched uh, the entire project. Um, so as you can see, here are some markers. Every time that I uh, notice like a mistake or anything that needs to be readjusted or something like that. So uh, yeah, let's just uh, jump right into here, for example, and uh, see what kind of things I had to readjust so here for example i wanted to have the camera angle just zoomed in a little bit more so uh, let's just adjust these kind of things okay moving on so this one so here uh, for example i didn't like that the frets look kind of gold which is just not the case and the original so uh, let's take the saturation down a little bit and that's it that's the whole thing yeah and so uh that's what i'm gonna do now like just uh, go through the entire project uh fix all the the little mistakes that i saw um and then i think we're done with the cutting part at least all right so now that we have corrected all the little mistakes and uh, adjusted all the clips to each other um it comes now to creating um uh, more fitting look to the song okay let's do that and experiment a little bit yeah i think i'm gonna leave it like this i mean this is like before this is the footage without any color correction or anything like that this is with adjusting the clips to each other and this is now the final look so whenever i'm completely done with editing the song itself then there comes the finishing touches like the band logo for example and the title of the song i try to find out where i can place them where it's fitting the intro of course where i blend in the sound of the intro with the beginning of the song and the end screen of course where i put the roadkill music production logo and the names of all the patrons all right i think we're done as i said i'm gonna double check everything now um watch it once on the on the big tv um to make sure that there are no hidden mistakes there but yeah, I think um, that's it for this video. So the last steps are rendering the video and creating a thumbnail. I try to always keep it really simple, just uh, like a screenshot of the video with the band logo and the title and that's it. Okay, we are done. The video is finished. It's uploading right now onto YouTube. Uh, today is June 27th. So we have a couple of days left until the 1st of July. Uh, which is uh, when I will be publishing it on my YouTube channel. But today, actually, of course, I'm going to upload it on my Patreon page as well for the early access, you know. And yeah, so we're done with this project. Almost. The next steps uh, will be I'm going to jump in uh, right into the editing and do a drums only video. Uh, after that, I'm going to create a guitar and bass uh, tab. And then I'm going to record a guitar and bass uh, tutorial video, which all of those I'm going to be posting on my Patreon page as well. And then after that, I'm going to be editing this video, of course, uh, but that's a couple of days in the future. And well, then off to the next one. If you made it this far into the video and you're still here, thank you very much for watching. I hope you got something out of this whole behind the scenes, how the process works of uh, how I make my videos. And yeah, if you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to send me a message or ask a question down below in the comments. And I'm happy to answer everything there. 
um yeah thank you so much to each and every one of you uh you guys are really amazing and it's uh really great to do these videos it's fun to interact with you guys thank you so much to toby uh for once again an incredible audio mix uh for this song it's always so great to work with you um, it's such a smooth work as well and I think that's really rare, especially in the music industry. Thanks to Harley Benton, thank you Bene for this really amazing guitar. I'm very much in love already and I'm very sure that I'm going to be playing them a lot in the future. And to all your guitar players and bass players out there, I can strongly recommend you checking out some Harley Benton guitars and basses. Uh, I'm really blown away by the quality and how they feel. I just unboxed them and they are ready to play, nothing to be set up at all. So yeah, I'm really amazed uh, by these instruments and I can strongly recommend you getting some or at least checking them out. And last but not least, of course, thanks to all my patrons. You guys are incredible. I appreciate your support so much. And yeah, I guess uh, I talk to you in like about half an hour or something when this one is uh, uploaded on the page. To everyone, take care. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.